the whole appealing for peace or were you praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the carry on Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you, what do you have to say about those guys? We are such curious, scared only words. Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And welcome to the latest edition of Views on the News, the show where we give our opinions about the various happenings, that the, the way the religious people influenced our human uh, population on the planet Earth. And as you can see, today we have in the panel, Tersia, my co-host from South Africa. Hello, Tersia. Welcome. And Hello, Guy Otten. Uh, a key member of Atheism UK in Manchester, England. Welcome, Hello. Guy. Hiya. Mm. So I'm going to start the show today, unusually, with a video. Watch this and tell me how horrified you are. Describe the punishment in the Quran as well as in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The person who commits zina according to the Islamic ruling or the sharia wherever whenever the sharia is established the punishment of the adulterer the person who commits zina man or woman the punishment for them is if they are married then they will be stoned to death and if they are unmarried then they will be beaten with 100 lashes in front of the big Muslim gatherings, as Allah said at the beginning of Surah An Nur. The man and woman who commit zina beat them and strike them with 100 lashes. And you should not show any kind of mercy or sympathy towards them when it comes to the matter of the religion of Allah. Then Allah says, And there should be a large number, large group of believers witnessing their punishment. Well, that may have been rather difficult to understand. So I'll give you a bit of an explanation. Zina is adultery, and he was explaining to us the correct way to stone a woman to death. And this requires, oh, here's Ty. Welcome, Ty. Welcome, Ty. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about Zina, which in the Islamic religion is adultery. And we've just seen a video by an imam explaining. The punishment, if you are a married woman, okay. is to be stoned to death. And if you are unmarried, and I assume that's an unmarried woman, is to be a thousand lashes in front of a large group of the public. Okay. I, I, th I thought it was a hundred lashes, but um, I may Sorry. have misheard that. <clears throat> no, you're right. It was a hundred lashes. I misread it. Did we already make a warrior princess joke? Because I know I got in late. Uh, well, and and I we think I, 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 sorry, go on. We don't mind you being late, Ty. It's okay. better late than never. Uh, and right. um, uh, from my understanding of Sharia is that the <laughs> man, the, the man that uh, the woman, the unmarried woman, commits adultery with also gets a hundred lashes. I'm not sure if that's right, but I think that's also the case. I mean, what's interesting I'm, I'm, about Go on, sorry. Yeah. I was going Thursday. to ask about that because because um, what happens in the case of, of a married woman, uh, does the other party also um, uh, get get punishment? And and then the other thing I was wondering about, in both cases, um, does this only apply if it's um, a, a woman and uh, if it's a male or, or female to male relationship? So is it adultery if a, an unmarried um, woman is in the relationship with another woman. Uh, right. Is that adultery or is that a totally different kind of sin? And if no, Tracy is right. Um, so I, I was wondering about that too. 
we should just allow gay marriage for just lesbians. That's the way how you solve this problem. <laughs> I, I, I actually think that lesbianism it, it isn't even um, sort of noticed by Islam, but I may be wrong about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, when you have that many virgins hanging out with each other, you would have, expect some of them have. So, I, mean, um, right? see, see, I think we've got a particular problem in the UK, and it maybe uh, you have it in the States and elsewhere as well, uh, which is that because um, there is there is the fear of of uh, being accused of racism, mm -hmm. nobody's you know no public official or politician is willing to actually stand firm against this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, and I think there is a big distinction to be made about requiring Muslims to uh, abide by the law and not promulgate, um, you know, not encourage or preach capital punishment or barbaric um, punishments. Um, and and uh, we should stand by our basic principles um, and, and enforce them. And I think that that's perfectly reasonable, you know, as a criticism of Islam. Uh, that's not to say, you know, we, we have to be racist or bigoted against uh, Muslims. I think Muslims, most Muslims don't go along with this stuff. Yeah. Um, Guy, I, I, want, I want to say that this is where the distinction between political correctness and humanism and secular humanism becomes <laughs> very important because... <laughs> Um, pe many people, especially politicians, and, and this is my opinion, are aware of being politically correct, but they are not, in effect, necessarily, by being politically correct, being um, uh, acting according to the values of humanism. And mm. I think that should be enforced because um, humanism does sometimes require one to discriminate on the basis of a person's actions towards another act a, a person. It's not a discrimination on the basis of um, race or creed. It's a basis of discriminating on the grounds of what is your behavior towards another person. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I'm a big fan of one democratically uh, authorized jurisdiction. I don't mm. think we should tolerate alternative jurisdictions with different rules and different sanctions. But what I haven't told you is that that imam shown in that video lecturing to that audience is the head of education at Birmingham's Green Lane Masjid School, which has just received £2.2 .2 million from the British government to support young people. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the problem. Uh, you know, that should not happen. It shouldn't happen on secular grounds, quite apart from the fact that this guy's uh, preaching is uh, objectionable. And, you know, we've got a huge mountain in this country to climb. I mean, just recently, I, I, I put something on Facebook and um, a, a fellow Green Party member is, is, is raising the issue as to whether I'm Islamophobic and racist. Well, you know, it's, it's an interesting discussion. We need to have it in the party as well. Um, you know, there is th th this sort of attitude has infected the party and infected mm. government and politicians throughout. Mm. And it, it's, a, it's a big problem. Mm. I'm, I'm not quite sure how we're going to get over it. We've, we've got to stand firm. Yeah. yeah Furthermore, can I, can I just bring in this other outrageous item that you might like to, to ro reel off, to rock off? What's the word I'm seeking here? To riff off. That is that the woman, if it's a woman that's being stoned to death, she should be buried waist deep in the ground before the stoning starts. And this, why do you think that is? It's, that you can't to, get away. Preserve, it's to preserve her modesty. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there, I have seen a horrific video clip of the Taliban doing just this to a woman in the past. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want I want to make a point that there's a distinction between racist and racial, and the distinction I always like to use is if your prejudice is specifically against the person's race, then yeah, that's a racist point of view. However, if you bring up a concern among a racial group and your concern isn't anything about the fact that 
they have a particular race, but in fact, just the practice that they're holding to that you have an objection with, then that could be a, a completely racial issue. Mm. And I think we like to blur the line between the two, particularly if we want to just set up a, what's the right word? Uh, uh, a scarecrow. There's a phrase that they use where um, instead of like dealing with proper argumentation, you just put up a false front. Oh. Oh. What am I looking for? What's the phrase? Straw man fallacy. Yeah, it's a straw man to just present a racial opposition mm -hmm. as a racist yeah. argument. It's like you could you can you can effectively look at this and recognize that I'm not trying to point an issue with your race. I'm trying to point an issue with this completely, you know, arbitrary objectionable behavior that you have against a particular group yeah. of people or a yeah. uh, sex or uh, people that wear a certain kind of hat or people that don't believe in the same God that you believe, like this has nothing to do with race. But if you are as a group doing this, this don't make the argument cheapen because no one wins from that. And, and truly it's not a good practice. That would be my yeah. takeaway. Yeah. Well, the thing is that this guy, uh, Zach Kaula, hmm. head imam and head of education at the Green Lane Masjid, worked in several roles before becoming an imam and joining the mosque. So according to his profile, he completed his master's in Islamic education from the Markfield Institute of Higher Education in Leicestershire. What do you think of that? I think you have problems in the, mm -hmm. in, in the UK because mm -hmm. can, you, can you imagine that amount of money being given to a, a school that teaches things like that and you have young people young boys uh impressionable who are going to grow up you have young girls who are being taught the same things and what always scares me almost as much as as the video that you've just shown is that for every um muslim male who believes that that should be done there is probably um a believing muslim female who believes that the same thing, even though she herself is 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 female? So can you imagine the the <coughs> role on effect of kids being ex being taught, not even exposed, deliberately being taught that at the expense of the of the UK taxpayers? Basically, I mean yes, yes. that that is just and and getting a qualification yes. like a master's in Islamic education. Yes. I mean, so, theology is a dubious qualification anyway, let alone that one in a specific religion and at the extreme end of that. So I think the, the, only, thing very the, only positive, the only positive comment that I can make as a South African is that this makes load shedding seem like a small problem to solve. <laughs> yeah. Fancy being taught that that's normal. That that is the right thing to do, isn't it horrible? Yeah. I w I wanted to bring up a weird point. This sounds like a silly analogy. It is a silly analogy, but it is a real point too. Uh, theology is sort of like the veggie burgers of like Burger King. It's like no <laughs> one shows up to Burger King to buy veggie burgers. Veggie burgers are not the bulk of their sales. They're just an extra thing that hangs out with the regular meat based menu of Burger King that makes the bulk of the sales. So when theology makes advances, it's on the back of science, like matter medicine, society, technology. These are all things that have come about through scientific pursuits. And theology is just like, oh, you built a building and have like people that can congregate in the same area. Sure, yes. I'll have a class here too. I'll hang out. It's like, why are you being the veggie burger of education? You could literally just do without it completely. And not only that, but the people who buy veggie burgers at Burger King think they're making a point, but you're just giving money to Burger King to kill yes. more cows. You're not... You just being there only further complicates and 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 makes your position more ironic. They're surfing on the on the concept of scholarship, aren't they? Mm. Oh my yeah, gosh! I mean, in 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 a um, in, in a secular society that we hope to get, I I don't think any kind of public money should be given either to faith schools. And this is a mosque school. Masjid is mosque, so yes. this, is, this is a mosque school indoctrinating their children. It's right. outrageous. Nor should any money be given to higher education to pursue these, you know, these um, these theology and Islamic studies degrees. 
Yeah. 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 I, I just don't agree with it. Yeah. Right. And, and these schools like don't exist. The schools um, don't exist say, unless it's on the back of those who do the scientific pursuits. I was going to say I'd like to add something to what Guy said, because at a mosque school, I don't believe girls get an education beyond the age of 11, and that the boys are taught to recite the Quran and precious that's, little else. That's it. There's no, there's no re I, mean, I mean, they don't do maths. They don't do proper science. They just basically get taught the Quran. Yeah. Mm. So before we have steam coming out of our ears, I'm going to move <laughs> on. This is we, we go now to northeastern Mali, which is basically part of the Sahara Desert, where they've had terrorism, Islamic terrorism. Basically, I think they're related to Al Qaeda for many years. And there's a river because in that part of the world, there's almost no roads and certainly no railways. So the river is a main traffic thoroughfare. And so the Islamist militants attacked a riverboat, killed 49 civilians. Then they moved on to attack an army camp, killing 15 soldiers. And during the battle, supposedly 50 of them, the militants, also died. Now, this is a threat which has been endemic in Mali for years, and it's been growing. And that's despite the claim that Russian Wagner Group mercenaries have been supposedly turning the tide on the Islamic campaign. I just wanted to point out it's very racist for you to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. What, the Wagner business? I, I, there were words, but it made me upset, so I'm going to call you racist, and now I'm right. <laughs> I've offended Ty. <laughs> I'm so racist. So do you have anything to say about this ongoing terrorism uh, activity, which supposedly has been countered by the Wagner Group? Um, I, I wasn't sure what the Wagner group were doing there, uh, on whose side they were on, actually. Uh, so it's, it's good to know that they're allegedly against the Islamists. They were, um, they were employed by the government, I believe, the Malian government. Yes. I suspect is, is that... Go on. Is this about oil or some sort of natural resource? Because what else does one fight about um, in a region like that? Um, in this case, it can't really be because the, uh, the the Islamist terrorists want to form a state there because most of the people already are um, is Islamic. It's an Islamic country. So what do they want to do? That's uh, Well, it's power, that's isn't it? I mean, they, they, they presumably want to do a sort of Taliban in the, you know, or Islamic state power grab i think i suspect and of course we we now have a situation where across uh sub-saharan africa there's something like five or six <coughs> countries all you know have had coups by the military mm. and what what what's going on there mm. something bizarre is happening well yeah. i i know that, i know that in in the in the sudan and uh, it it's Basically, it's either access to resources or access to um, the transport of resources because the oil has to go from the sort of um, upper half of uh, mm. of the southern Sahara, which is more in the center. It has to be moved to the coastal areas, and yeah, yeah. Uh, and this this conflict is is also moving further and further south in Mozambique, which is right up the street from where we are, well, where South Africa is, um, mm. also has the same troubles. And we've, we have yes. had confirmation that, that the Wagner group is also um, mm. employed there. And mm. the tr trouble with, with, with groups like Wagner is that they are, they don't really stand for anything. They go for who pays the most money. Yes. And that means if, if the Taliban pays them more money than a, a secular humanist government, then they'll work for the Taliban. So mm. um, I, I don't see that they're in any way a positive um, 
addition to the mixture. Mm. I, I don't think there's any secular humanist governments in the region. <laughs> no. No, Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but if they were, in my dreams, you know, in my wildest um, imaginations, no. uh, the thing, thing is, um, <laughs> who, who has the most money? That I don't know. Tersky, I, 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 Tersky. I, 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 go on. I go do, on. Tersky, I do disagree with you. I find, like, your views on personal uh, <laughs> militaries yeah. are very racist. And I do not support them. And I hope you feel bad because I called you racist. Now I'm right. All right no, but I mean, the, 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 I, I, I understand the Wagner group is really an extension of Russian military power. And, uh, um, you know, and, and that's what it's there for, to really support the Russian influence in the region. Now, mm. what, why are the Russians needing to influence that region? I don't know. And and hopefully they're losing influence very big time now because they've bombed the, the grain silos in Odessa. And those mm. grain silos are important for, you know, relieving poverty and hunger in those yes. countries. Well, I want to mention here that um, we had an apology from Susan Gerbic, who you may remember came on our show a couple of weeks ago. She's attending a, a conference in uh, Texas. So she can't make it tonight, but she's looking forward to joining us again in the future. And I, it, something went through my head. <coughs> I know what she would have said in relation to this news item, but it's gone. I can't think of it now. If it comes back, I'll bring it to the, to the show. <laughs> All right. you going to channel, are you going to channel, Susan? <laughs> well, maybe, <laughs> yes. Uh, so the next thing is also a video that I want to show you. And it's, um, it's a clip from our friends at uh, Atheist um, Republic. So here we go. Shocking. Indian teacher forces kids to slap Muslim student. A horrifying incident in India's uh, Muzaffarnagar district has sparked outrage nationwide after a video surfaced on social media showing a teacher by the name of Tripta Tiagi encouraging students to slap their seven-year-old Muslim classmate, Mohammed uh, Altamash. The video shows a visibly anxious Altamash standing before Tiagi and his classmates as they took turns slapping him, while Tiagi instructed them to do it properly and made anti-Muslim remarks. The incident led to widespread condemnation, including from opposition leader Rahul Gandhi, who accused Tiagi of, quote, sowing poison of discrimination in the minds of innocent children, and blamed the ruling PJP party for stoking intolerance and violence against Muslim minorities in India. Well, that's uh, a report of a Hindu teacher encouraging her pupils, uh, Hindu pupils, to physically punish a Muslim pupil for not, not being acceptable in some way. This is pupils. This is happening in a school. Was he being slapped because he's a Muslim? I didn't quite get that. Or is that assumed? <laughs> I don't think so. It was a behavioral correction slap. The teacher, uh, I should say, the teacher, I should say, is some partially disabled, unable to move around the classroom. So she got these other pupils who were on her side to do the punishment. And while that was happening, she was chanting anti-Muslim slogans. Yeah, the there's there's a there's a famous comedian in the U.S. who talks about the difference between men and women and it starts like when you're the boys or girls and it's like when the boy does something wrong they can be you know beaten or you just break their toy and then they'll feel bad but if it's a girl that does something wrong it's like you have to go into like this weird manipulative state where you hire the the kids next door to come over and beat the the girl or break her toys and it was it was like this extra level of stuff and I, the the reason why I'm I'm reminded of this is to imagine punishing a kid for for being Muslim when you shouldn't do it could have been as simple as just like 
smacking or making fun of that kid, but to hire or manufacture a situation where all these other students have to do it is such a level of bullying, evil and bullying. Like it's mm -hmm. almost like it, I wouldn't believe it unless if there was like video of it. Like this would mm -hmm. seem like sort of like the propaganda that you would have to get out of like a, a, a cartoon or a movie or something mm. like that. It's just such this level of comedy that, or like zaniness or manufacturedness that like it, to think that this actually happened is just, it's such a bizarre breach of trust and authority figures. And I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm appalled. Yeah. And in this case, there was video. The whole event was being videoed by an adult watching the, the actual <laughs> Well, not only did it happen, but someone let it happen and someone was videotaping it. Yes. Like, yeah. like yeah. all these things just stack up to like... Yeah, they do. <laughs> I'll, I'll, one last example. There's a there's a literal book called Matilda. I don't know if you ever heard about it, but uh, yeah. it's about a girl who has a really evil teacher who would tie yeah. kids That's to right. like things and spin, spin them around. But, but, well but, 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 the, but the strategy of the teacher was, I'm going to be so zany with my punishments that when the kids go home and tell their parents, she took us by the pigtails and flew us around. It's like, the parents will never believe it because it's just so crazy and over the top. Yes. And I'm yes. wondering like, did that teacher read Matilda and was like, you know what? I have a great idea. I'm going to make this crazy thing. Well, Don't videotape it. Don't videotape it. What I'm what I'm actually wondering is whether this, uh, and I'm, those who know me will know that I'm normally not a conspiracy theorist, but this is so mm. crazy. It is, is. There any chance, is there any chance that this could be some manufactured attempt by somebody who wants to stoke um, Muslim on Hindu violence in India? Uh, mm. And 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 that they that that these that this is why this is being done because there's so many things about this that make, as, as a teacher I mean forget about any religion things these are seven year old kids I mm. teach I teach for I teach teenagers and trust me there are many times when I would like to slap many of them <laughs> but, but but to 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 cross that line into that type of violence and inciting children to, to do to, it for you yes do it for this, you yeah this so is taking I, the I really... idea this is taking the idea of a prefect to the extreme yeah but is that any different than when god tells people hey you're my children people and i need you to go to war against these this tribe over here like is that no. literally any different yes but hindus hindus have i mean hindus typically aren't um that they they don't they have so many gods that tell them so many things that they yeah. they get so busy by all these gods and to bring all the yes. necessary sacrifices their gods don't particularly tell them to do such things. Ah, uh, uh, but, but they so, all hate uh, Muslims. They all hate Muslims. All the gods are like, yeah, but by the way, here's the one <laughs> point that we all agree on. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I hope to me the better outcome would be that this is some sort of conspiracy by somebody high up in Indian. Um, political circles who want to stoke violence because if teachers like that are allowed to operate mm. in Indian schools then then that that is just to me but even just, if it was it's still terrible like it there's no there's no clever scenario where this context is is it's good absolutely no, absolutely absolutely and it certainly but, has but, succeeded it's it's stoked a furore yeah i mean the way things are in india um you know the that, that she'll probably get uh, she'll probably get some fame and a medal or something for doing it or be voted as a republican candidate for president in, in the US. <laughs> get, get to the meet BJP. rishi sunak do you think get to meet rishi sunak oh might might do yeah <laughs> anyway moving to england we're not perfect here as you know we have a doctor a Christian doctor who is uh, accused of being uh, in breach of the the regulations that doctors should be following. He's accused of overstepping the boundaries because he, first of all, he he refused to prescribe the. Uh, antidepressants that this patient should have got according to the regular uh, prescriptions that it, he was in receipt of 
And then he clasped the patient's hands and okay. began discussing religion. So this was a vulnerable patient, depressed, and he allegedly um, got permission from that patient uh, <laughs> by saying, I'm not going to give you the antidepressants, but let's tackle this issue from a third spiritual angle. And that's when he got hold of the patient's hands, clasping them together and talking about his religion and prayer and the medical practitioner's tribunal service have wrapped his knuckles because you're not supposed to do that as a doctor. Well, that's this is a good story. Mm. Yeah. So, compared to the others, at least nobody's died yet. Yes, yeah, this, this is corrective actions that should have taken place. Like, yes, because yes. the teenager's mother complained that uh, he had been made to feel uneasy when the GP told him he needed to reconnect with God. I like how the English stories are like, this is bad news. We're just so handsome. Oh, well, this is it just turns out all the English boys and girls who are just so good looking and well mannered. Okay, anyway, back to Iran, back to America. No, but I mean, the, 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 no, the, 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 there is a, there is another angle to this, and that is that the NHS at the moment, uh, the the GP would have been part of the NHS, the National Health Service, is so overstretched and behind, you know, that uh, really, you know, I I think that he's been wasting time he, he could have been treating another patient properly mm. uh, instead he's he's uh, you know indulging himself in a bit of missionary work that's yes, what yeah. it is exactly. it's a bit of missionary work and it's completely out of order to do yes. that the other unfortunate thing too is he probably went through all the lengths to become a proper practice standardized doctor right but it was his indoctrination that forced him to do this really uncalled for move that robbed society of what could have been just a regular doctor that we could add to our mm. ranks. Like he could have been yeah. continue to practice in this secular format, but because mm. of his indoctrination and lack of critical thinking that he's applied to his own dogma, we've lost the, uh, what could be another person that could help people. And that's yeah. the, uh, yeah. and, and, and there's yet another angle on this, if I may be, indulge a moment more on that. Angle. Even a chaplain um, in a, in a, in a hospital is not permitted to, uh, you know, um, be a missionary. That's not the purpose. The purpose is entirely to respond to the patient's, um, you know, spiritual needs. So if the spirit, if the patient says, uh, would you pray with me? That's fine. He's able to do that, but he can't go in and say, oh, what you need is a prayer, you know, right. Um, <laughs> And um, I mean, I, 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 in my chaplaincy, um, patients sometimes ask me for a prayer or a blessing, forgetting that I'm a humanist, stroke atheist, you know, chaplain. Um, True. Yeah, it's quite also, funny. For for those of us who see religion or supernatural thinking as borderline mal thought, or even to the extent of like a mental illness, imagine mm -hmm. having a actual mental, you know, condition and being supplanted with. Uh, a supplemental mental illness. It's sort of like, oh man, you're addicted to heroin. How about some opium? There you go. Yes, yes, that's very analogous. Yes. Well, this particular guy, name of Dr. Richard Scott. You you won't be surprised to know that he ran two mission hospitals in Tanzania before becoming a GP, and now he's in the. Bethesda Medical Center in Margate, Kent. And when the patient had uh, finished this consultation with him, he handed him a Bible as he left. Oh. What, though, what, no, what wonder, is... no wonder Christianity is so strong in Africa. There are all these bloody European missionaries going out and, and flogging Christianity. Yes. Mm. You can talk to me about that, but I was going yeah. to say that that bothers me even more is that this was a teenager so yes. <laughs> like you say guy even if if i'm a, a a doctor and i see that my patient is in severe distress and i'm a, reli a religious person if 
if I if it's an adult and I, I, I could see myself as putting on my Christian hat saying, would you feel better if I prayed with you? Um, mm. And asking that person that and leaving it at that. I, I can see a, a Christian uh, doctor doing that. But this is this is a teenager. You don't even ask a teenager that question. Um, and I know how susceptible people and teenagers in particular are to any type of um, thing that they can hold on to. So <coughs> if, you, if you reach out to a teenager in a vulnerable state, you mm. can do almost anything with them. And mm. it, it's, it's, so, uh, it's so gross to me because mm. I'm, I'm a teacher. I work with teenagers and mm. I'm openly non-religious. However, if I get any sense from any of my students that they are um, – that they are depressed or that they are not in a good place, I would never go so far as to telling them or even insinuating them or asking them, have you ever considered that your faith is maybe the origin of why you're feeling guilty all the time? I would never do that because that is such an infringement yes. on, on the right of that teenager uh, and of the, mm. of, of the parents of that child. <laughs> um, I, I, I even in my classes, when, when any topic comes up that, that, that just makes, a, makes me think that I might cross the bridge into what could be seen as atheist preaching, mm. I just stop it and break mm. it off out of respect for mm. not indoctrinating anybody. Um, yes, with, with any also, doctrine, yes. Also. So to add insult to injury here, the Medical Practitioners Tribunal Service, which was listening to this case, concluded that Dr. Scott's conduct constituted misconduct. Wow. And unfortunately, though, it wasn't considered to be deplorable or disgraceful. Therefore, it didn't cross the high threshold required to be counted as serious misconduct well <clears throat> yeah that's a problem yeah but but on the other hand maybe a shot over his bows will be enough because yeah, he, he needs to realize he's in england now not in tanzania thank so, you so i'm glad you said that because what they're doing this tribunal is currently sitting to consider if he should be given a warning letter mm. and the final icing on this cake is he's already had one back in okay. June 2012. You guys, he's Christian. He doesn't read. You guys know this. <laughs> <laughs> the General Medical Council issued him with a warning letter after a patient complained, guess what, that he had abused his position to push his religion upon him. Oh, and of course, of course, ah. it's persecuting him. Next thing he's going to say that he's being persecuted, you know, yeah. um, just, just be careful. And maybe that's why the board, the medical council or whatever, maybe that's why they're so careful. Because, you know, it's persecution if you're not allowed to push your religion on other people. Mm. Yeah, ma maybe we should uh, recommend him to the um, Vatican to be made into a saint, <laughs> a martyr. <laughs> Can't he just become a GP for the Pope? I mean, then he's out of the, the, the system. Well, I'm going to speed things up now because we're coming up to the end of the time I allocate for this show. I just want to mention that uh, the head of the Episcopal Church, that's the American version of the Anglican Church, has he's going to revise disciplinary procedures for bishops because... There's a perception going around that they get a they get a free pass on behavioural issues because uh, they, they are not, they are not treated severely enough when uh, accusations of various sorts of abuse are levied against them. And Julia Ayala Harris, who's president of the House of Deputies and second ranking officer of this church. <clears throat> complained that a retired bishop subjected her to non-consensual physical contact as oh. well as inappropriate verbal statements on the day she was elected president. 
<laughs> so she, she's, uh, but but she complained, and it was investigated. But the investigation concluded that the retired bishop likely violated church canons and New York sexual harassment laws, but he was only referred for a pastoral response rather than any discipline. So it was kept in house. Did they lay the hands on it? Did they perform a laying on of the hands? You know? <laughs> a laying of hands. Uh, or, or maybe it was a laying of lips on, on the, uh, you know, like Rubialis did. It could have been, yeah. I think we'll leave that there. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, I do have uh, two items of good news. One is that Mexico's Supreme Court threw out federal crime pen criminal penalties for abortion. Mm, I heard that. Mm. National laws prohibiting abortion are unconstitutional. They violate women's rights. And uh, this is a, a coming trend, apparently, in Latin America. What, what's interesting to me, though, is the way it's talked about, because listen to this. It says, no woman or pregnant person, nor any health worker, will be able to be punished for abortion. Well, what pregnant person well, isn't a woman? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Wow. Well, this, 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 this gets worse. This, this genderism gets worse because... Uh, even one of the right-wing objectors to this abolition of the punishment for abortion, she's a woman called um, Irma Barrientos, and she's the director of the Civil Association for the Rights of the Conceived, would you believe, you know, a zygote, a fertilized mm -hmm. egg. She says, we're not going to stop. Let's remember what happened in the United States. After 40 years, the Supreme Court reversed its abortion decision, and we're not going to stop until Mexico guarantees the right to life from the moment of conception. Now, the court <coughs> said the legal system that criminalized abortion was unconstitutional because it violates the rights of women and people with the ability to gestate. Who are they? <laughs> They're trans men. We play, it's, 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 you're treading on dangerous ground now because um, uh, let's, let's, let's not... There might be a person who's, who, with a womb and the ability to conceive who do, does not see themselves as a, a woman. So... so Let's let's just leave that there. But the interesting, the more interesting point to me at this stage is to note that Mexico is more liberal than the United States. Yeah, or, or or at least parts of the United States. And yeah, true. Parts, but, yeah. Mm. 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 Finally, cricket <clears throat> brings us together. Are you bringing Are you bringing up cricket for real? All right, go yes. for it. Go ahead, John. Yes, yes. It's your show. Do what you got. You'll be do. very pleased to hear that the Chelmsford Hindu Society beat the Chelmsford Cathedral. You and, literally could make up those names. I would have no idea. <laughs> and, and, the the and Springfield Chumminsons brought the Lycanshire's <laughs> Hoppen Danferens. <laughs> oh, great. That's great. That's wonderful. Come on. You've, you've stolen all our names anyway. <laughs> Just that you can't pronounce them. So it becomes Warwickshire and Norwich. <laughs> Anyway, the, this Chelmsford Hindu Cricket Society, well, their, their cricket team, the Society of Hindus, they beat the Chelmsford Cathedral's team and the Chelmsford Muslim Society. They won the, this three-way <laughs> tournament at the Broomfield Cricket Club, and they the three teams celebrated by sharing dinner together. So there you go. Cricket is a bonding experience. Well, on a, on a very serious note, um, I, I have to bring this in. The Rugby World Cup is happening in France at the moment, Guy. A tie. I don't know if you know that. So, uh, come on. just be Guy or tie. Guy or tie. I did, I did, I did Guy, know. I, I've told Guy, I did know. I've told Guy, and he had an inkling. So, Ty, this is for you. But on a semi-serious note, um, 
the Springboks beat Scotland tonight, uh, but that's not what I wanted to say. As I watched the opening um, ceremony and the matches, and coming from a deeply divided <coughs> country, especially along racial lines, sport does unite people. And I, I wonder, I wonder what would happen in countries like Sudan and Mali, and even in Afghanistan, and 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 those very mm. um, uh, uh, severely Muslim states. If more yeah. sports were allowed, oh. and, and, um, and, they're, and they're doing that, aren't they? Because as the oil demand dries up, they're diversifying into holding tennis matches, golf matches, you name it. But, yeah, but it should so, be brought, it shouldn't be bringing matches to the people, it should be giving people a chance to play their games. And let's begin mm. by doing rugby above cricket because. Rugby is a better outlet for our violent inclinations, and there will be much <laughs> less violence if we play more rugby and less Bible reading. <laughs> well, I, I don't Sorry. know. I mean, we're complaining about teachers slapping people, but rugby mm. is very physical. It's like it's like a battle yeah. basically going on for one and yeah. a half hours. A yeah, physical yeah. fight. People, no people are disabled. People are disabled in rugby. Be. Yes. Yeah. So, Ty, well, get I'm well just... soon. I know you're suffering from this too long. I want you to recover. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. People, you've been wonderful, as I knew you would. Thank you very much. Say all goodbye. of us. Too. You all are racist. I used to say that because you were not. Was the Pope appealing for peace or were you praying for peace? And, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that guys?